We're going to look at a bunch of exponential problems and use what we know about exponents to hopefully come up with some properties that we can apply later on. Um, so start with simplify 2 to the 5th power times 2 to the 3rd power. Well, what we remember, multiplication or exponents is just repeated multiplication. So 2 to the 5th power really just means 2 times itself 5 times. All right, so that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to write out 2 times itself 1, 2, 3, four, five times, and then I'm going to multiply it times two to the third, which is two times itself three times, two times two times two. So now when you look at it, you have two times itself a bunch of times, right? So when you have a problem like that, you can, just like when you had, you know, two times itself five times, and two times itself three times, you could really just look at, well, how many times am I multiplying two times itself? And that is eight times. So I could say that two to the fifth times two to the third is really equal to two to the eighth. It's equal to two times itself eight times. Now let's look at the other one next, and then we'll look at how the exponents relate. So we have two to the fifth cubed. So that means we're taking 2 to the 5th and we're multiplying it times itself 3 times. So let's see how that works. We have 2 times itself 3 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right, each of those 5 times. So if we look at it, right, this is 5 times, and this is five times, and this is five times. If we look at it all together, that would be 15 times that you're multiplying two by, two by itself. So that would be two to the 15. So now what we want to do is we want to kind of compare our answers, and I know those aren't our final answers, right? We could actually simplify 2 to the 8th, um, but for right now we're just going to keep it as an exponent. Look at 2 to the 8th. Compare it to what we started with, 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 3rd. How do the exponents relate? Well, how do we get 8 from 5 and 3? We add them together, right? If you would take 5 plus 3, it's going to equal 8, and that's what happens for that problem. Right, if we look at the other problem, when we have a power of a power, so right, this is two powers multiplying together. 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 3rd is different than 2 to the 5th to the 3rd, right? We have a power of a power. We got 15 as our exponent. So how does 15 relate to 5 and 3? Well, that is 5 times 3. Make that dot a little bit bigger so we can tell that this is definitely multiplication. 5 times 3 equals 15. And that's going to be a rule. Those are going to be two different rules that we have for these two different situations. And we're going to have some more rules in a second, so we're going to summarize them all at the end. Um, but when you're multiplying two powers, as long as they have the same base, so this is base 2 and this is base 2, you are able to add those exponents and get the exponent of your answer. So five plus three equals eight. When you have a power of a power like this right here, two to the fifth cubed, you are able to multiply those exponents. Five times three equals, I don't know why I wrote 18 down there, equals 15. So let's look at some more. What about if we have two to the fifth divided by two cubed? Well, again, let's write everything out really longhand. So 2 to the 5th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? 5 times divided by 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, 3 times. And you're dividing. Remember, when you're dividing, you're really canceling out what they have in common. Um, you reduce their common factors. So what I'm just going to do to help with that is here's a 2 and there's a 2. I'm going to cancel them out. There's a 2, and there's a 2. I'm going to cancel them out. Here's a 2, here's a 2. I'm going to cancel them out. So when we look at what's left over, we have 2 to the 
or 2 times 2, which is 2 squared. So how does our exponents that we started with, 5 and 3, relate to our exponent that we have? Well, 5 minus 3, right? 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. When you're dividing, when you're dividing two powers, again, as long as they have the same base, you are able to subtract their exponents. So 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 3rd, same base, both base 2. Subtract their exponents, 5 minus 3, and you get 2. All right, which we could then say is 4, but, you know, we're really just focusing on what's the relationship that we get with the exponents here. All right, let's look at the next one. 2x squared, that whole quantity, cubed. So we're going to write that out, 2x squared times 2x squared times 2x squared. All right, 2x squared cubed means that each of those, the whole thing inside that parentheses gets multiplied times itself three times. Well, what do we really get here? Again, focusing on the exponents, not necessarily on, um, you know, the number that you would get, right? We didn't rewrite 2 squared as 4, we just kept it in terms of the exponents. So when we look at that, 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2, right, is 2 cubed. And x squared times x squared times x squared, well, those are all multiplying together, so we can add their exponents, 2 plus 2 plus 2, and that's 6, x to the 6. So what's the relationship that we have here with our original exponents and our answer exponents? Well, the 3 went to the 2, right, our coefficient of 2, and the 3 went to the x squared, and you multiplied those powers. Really, all we're saying here is that you um, perform the power to all factors. Perform the power to all factors. The 2 got cubed and the x squared got cubed. Those are both factors because they're both multiplying together inside the parentheses. And I think we have one more set. Um, what about these? So 2 cubed divided by 2 cubed. Well, we just learned that you could subtract the exponents, right? You can take your exponents, 3 minus 3, and get your answer. 2 to the 0 power. Well, what is 2 to the 0 power? Okay, well, let's try that another way. Let's try writing it all out. So 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2. Well, we're able to cancel those out, right, with the division. So 2 divided by 2 cancels. 2 divided by 2 cancels. 2 divided by 2 cancels. We don't have anything left. But what you need to be really careful with here, whenever you're dividing and stuff cancels, remember, you're dividing. It doesn't just cancel, cancel. What is 2 divided by 2? All right, how many times does 2 go into itself? It's not 0, it's 1. So what we have then is that 2 to the 0 power is equal to 1. That's anything. Anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. That's where that comes from. So if you've ever wondered, like if you knew that rule, that anything to the zero power is equal to one, you might be like, well, why? There is a little bit of an explanation as to why um, anything to the zero power is equal to one. And then our last one, two cubed divided by two to the fifth. So how do we go about doing that one? Um, again, we could subtract our exponents. You need to make sure you take the numerator exponent minus the denominator. So two to the three minus five, which is two to the negative two power. Well, negative exponents, that's a first, right? How do we deal with negative exponents? The other way of looking at that one, again, you can write it all out. Two, two cubed is two times two times two, and two to the fifth is two times two times two times two times two. And so again, we have stuff cancel, right? Two cancels, and another two cancels, and another two cancels. And so what are we left with? In the numerator, everything canceled, but remember, we're dividing. So 2 divided by 2 in the numerator, we still have 1. In the denominator, we still have a 2 and a 2 multiplying, so that's 2 squared. So what we get here is if we have a negative exponent, 2 to the negative 2, 
it's actually equal to 1 over 2 squared. When we have negative exponents, it kind of flips places. That power, 2 to the negative 2, just flips to the denominator. And it actually works the other way around. Um, if it's in the denominator, it flips to the numerator. So here are all of those properties um, that we talked about. Right? If you have a product of powers, so two powers multiplying together, as long as they have the same base, you are able to add their exponents. Power of a power. So if you have a power in a parenthesis and another power to it, we multiply those exponents. Power of a product. So if there's multiple factors inside the parentheses, the power goes to all of them. Negative exponent flips spots. Right? Flips to the denominator or flips to the numerator in order to make it positive. Zero exponent is equal to one. Quotient of powers, if you're dividing two powers, as long as they're the same base, again, we can subtract their exponents. And power of a quotient. We didn't go over this one, but it's very similar to product power of a product. If you have a quotient inside your parentheses, the power goes to each of those.